guys, Spartan Jess here, and today Ryan and I will be teaching you how to convert the limited edition Nerf Needler into an HPA airsoft gun. Let's begin. And there are a lot of screws holding this bad girl together. <laughs> but she's all together at least you know she ain't going anywhere mm -hmm. it's good to just be the cameraman and just watch you do this <laughs> like, yeah you're doing a good job all right so here's the uh, hba nerf kneeler that ryan converted into an airsoft gun tell me how you did this whole process yeah so the first thing i needed to do was to figure out where i was going to mount the engine uh, hop up and barrel it would have been nice to have here in the middle so it exits out the front of the gun in the center but obviously that much room there is not a whole lot to work with so i i biased it up a little bit and ran the engine right above the trigger, uh, just so I can get a little bit more barrel length, a little more accuracy, a little more FPS out of it, otherwise it'd have been really struggling. Uh, for engine, it's got the F2, and then it uses the bull gear hop-up attachment that replaces the front half of the, uh, the engine, so that those two are like married together as one unit, which makes mounting it in this gun a whole lot simpler. Uh, you'll notice that the only thing actually holding this whole assembly in is this mounting bracket here. It bolts to the frame on the other side, and then clamps onto the hop-up assembly here. So there's actually nothing underneath or around this engine and yet it's still mounted very snugly. Uh, for air, the line is run in this big loop because it would have been really hard to get around that angle there all the way down to the basically a bulkhead fitting here with a quick disconnect and then the air line down at the bottom. Um, this is part of the battery tray that would have held, I think it was AA batteries that originally powered this uh, Nerf gun. And so I repurposed that battery tray to hold the LiPo and then the FCU that runs the gun. In order to get that airline to fit out, all I had to do was drill a hole in there uh, for it to poke out for you to attach your airline. Um, the battery does double duty. So not only does it power the gun, so you can have your semi, you can hear it clicking in there, full auto. Center is safe. It also powers all the LEDs that were already in the gun. Uh, should be noted that it looks kind of complicated with all these wiring. Everything just strewn about, but actually like 90% of that is just running power and ground to all the different LEDs. Just one part of it is literally just powering the LEDs and the other part is literally just everything that goes into the HPA in yep. itself. They're, they're separate, um, but powered off the same battery. Uh, wiring for the, the FCU to, to power the Polar Star is actually pretty darn simple. And as we could tell, we have a little uh, wire extending over here to the other half of the kneeler. Yep. And this all connects to the rest of the LEDs on the other side of that half. Yeah, it makes it really easy to, uh, to disassemble the gun and work on it. Because the, the, the way the gun is originally wired up is these front needles are wired across. These second set of needles are wired across and so on and so forth. So when you split the whole thing apart, and that, it's kind of like this webbing of wires that goes between the two halves. Mm. And it's really short, so in order to split the gun apart like this for maintenance as well as troubleshooting when I was actually building the thing. It made a lot more sense to just to rewire everything to be this this one split connector and then that half of the gun can go away. That works perfectly. Now what was the length of the barrel? It's probably about, I'd say it's probably about 145 mils in length. Okay. It all comes out right there. And that's also where you get to reload the magazine of the needler, yep. which is also a wine mag. Yep, so this magazine uses a uh, high cap style loading door at the front. Yeah, you do have to point the gun at your face, but I mean, it's airsoft. And you can always just pull the airline if you have to do that. <laughs> but yeah, holds a, I think it was somewhere in the neighborhood of four or 500 rounds. And yeah, a little pull string just down there at the bottom for you to automatically wind it. So this little bit is tricky. Let's get lined back up. So, mag sides are together. Supports are in place. And then you just gotta finagle it. You know, what kind of paint did you use for it? It's a color shift. Uh, I think it's Duplicolor Color Shift from AutoZone. Regular rattle can color shifting spray paint. See all that purple and then all that blue? Very shiny and very nice. 
Oh, and by any chance, do you actually use this uh, on and off switch that was originally on the needler? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, it's, it's glued in place now. Gotcha. You said this uh, tap down here was epoxied? Yep, put up the cardboard walls just so that uh, it pools around that and then pour it in a bunch of epoxy and let it cure overnight. And now that uh, fitting is nice and secure and ain't going anywhere. And then if I do need to remove that part, it's got a, it's got a push uh, quick connect fitting on the other side for the Polar Stars airline. And we'll put these in there. Actually works quite nicely with the two battery trays. Put the FCU in one side, put the battery in the other. And the Phillips head screws on this bottom piece are uh, they're captured so they don't fall out. And as a bonus, here's some gameplay footage of the Needler in action. Nice shot. Nice shot. Oh, got one though. Is he on the outside of it? He's inside. Poke it in. Nice. Get out of that sight line. <laughs> Roger that. Thank you. Lucky for you, I happen to be trained in the medical arts. Somebody else cover this so you can get me without having to start over. Yeah. They're in the ravine, close. Drag me back. Let's go. Hey. We're moving. This wall right here should be fine. You're good. Damn, they got an MG? <laughs> That's true. My bad. That's too narrow of an angle. Yep. Alright, I'm crossing. Got him! <laughs> They're over here at the corner of the building on the left. I got you. A lot of us, but over this way. That's game. So you can shoot. <laughs> game over. And with that, Ryan and I hope you enjoyed this HBA Needler Showcase. I was fortunate enough to actually spend the weekend with my friend here to go over a couple more custom airsoft builds that Ryan has made over the years. So if you guys are interested in more videos like this one, make sure to keep an eye out for more upcoming tutorials from Ryan's vast collection. 
from replicas like the Sweet Business, the Forerunner, No Time to Explain, and a little bit more of an in-depth look into the HBA MA40. And the goal for these videos is to do our best to explain the process that was used to create these unique sci-fi airsoft replicas so that even you can make these builds if you want. For all the 3D printed parts that was designed for this Needler project, make sure to check out the link in the video description to download them for free. And if you don't have access to a 3D printer, make sure to contact Alpha to Zeta Industries or 3D POD so that they can print these files out for you. And to finish off, I'd like to sincerely thank Ryan for letting me come out to Virginia. For some airsoft at Battle Hack during Z6, it was an outstanding event and I really do appreciate you letting me come out there. Uh, and also for letting us film these video tutorials together. I'm very sure everybody's going to enjoy them because of your creativity. Thank you guys for watching. Please like and subscribe, and don't forget. This is truly Combat Evolved.